Hey guys, so today we're going to put together the 3D printable droppable bomb. Uh, just a few notes that I want to point out before we get started is that there are three main sections. Make sure you preach, print each one. Uh, I highly recommend that you print the fins with 100% infill if you're going to enlarge it. Otherwise, uh, the size as, as given to you will print just fine. The nose cone should definitely be printed with uh, at least 15% infill. Uh, currently, this print that I just did is, uh, yeah, I use 15% infill, but you can see that the inside is a little rough, but honestly, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be on the inside. Now, the bomb main body, you can print completely hollow to save some weight. It's a little more tricky, uh, but it can be done if you're going to not try to be that finicky about it, 10% infill will be just fine. And these prints are done with 0.2 millimeter layer height. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first things that you're gonna want is the fins and the main body. And a little bit of glue. So, big thing that you really need to figure out is how you want the bomb. So, there's the flat spot on it for the release mechanism, and that part you really want to be facing up. But you also want your fins not to interfere with any flat surface that the bomb will be up against when it is being towed up into the sky. So, what I f have found, best to just put it on a flat surface, and rotate it till it's about right and just leave it there. From there what you can do is just put one little drop on each corner and through capillary action the glue will go into each crack. And I'm using thin Loctite super glue, I'm not using any fancy hobby super glues. Uh, this stuff just uh, does just fine. So while that dries, I'm going to talk a little bit about the nose cone. Now the nose cone is uh, a fitted part. It friction fits directly onto the front of the main bomb body. Uh, what you can do with this is just simply friction fit it on there. And if you're going to be dropping onto rocks or a, a some sort of gravel or anything like that, then I would go ahead and just leave it friction fitted. Otherwise, you would, uh, if you glue it on, you'll have to reprint the entire bomb over again. Whereas as it falls, if the nose gets a whole bunch of banged up and, and beat up, you can just print the nose over again. Save yourself some headache and do that. Also, I left this cavity here on purpose. Number one, the shape of it is self-reinforcing so that it doesn't shatter. It's it's pretty resilient. I've dropped it out of a, a two-story window here in my home. But what you can also do is take some leftover parts from your drawer and you can stuff them inside as ballast. Or you can take some lead shot uh, like shotgun lead shot and you can mix with some Gorilla Glue and really pack it in there. What that does is it'll change your trajectory ang angle. As the, as the bomb prints, it's pretty well balanced for a realistic fall, but some people may want it to be a little more heavy uh, to penetrate wind a little bit better if it's like on a gusty day. Maybe you want a different a different angle due to your flying sight. So there is a pocket in here. You can even glue these things in with some hot glue if you really want to, but other than that, that's really all you need to do. Now the bomb can be scaled up. I would not recommend scaling, scaling it down. The reason I don't recommend scaling it down is that you run into problems printing the nose. Uh, while that may not seem like too much of an issue, it gets even worse if you go too small. 
printing the fins. The fins do not want to print because they're so thin. Uh, as it is, the fins are four thicknesses or 1.2 millimeters wide. So even at a, a, a half size print of what this currently is, they would be so thin they would be really brittle and break. So it's kind of a compromise in size and strength. And again, I'm using PLA here. Uh, just, nothing fancy, guys. Just really nothing fancy. So again, your, your bomb cap just pops right on and it takes a little bit of force to get it off but for the most part it's just gonna stay on there and I'm gonna fly it just like that again your flat spot you're gonna use your release mechanism uh, mounting plate which looks like this and the release mechanism build is covered in another video so make sure you check that one out I would highly recommend that you mount the bomb with it with the the pins positioned in this manner the reason is that since the bomb will have air resistance pushing up against it when the bomb is released the pressure is on these flat plates the back side of these pins and so it's less likely to get hung up in the mechanism itself so make sure that you try to mount your release mechanism to match up with this, but this is the direction that I would recommend for the bomb. Alright, so our glue is mostly dry. I can see it's a little bit wet still, but holding just fine. Again, just four tiny drops of glue. Well, that completes the build of the bomb, the droppable bomb that I've designed for you guys. Hope you have a lot of fun with it and maybe get in a little bit of target practice as well. That should be a pretty good challenge at the field for you guys. And I want to see some pictures, I want to see some linked videos in the, in the description and comments below so that I can see what you guys are up to. Another thing you can do with the bomb is that you can paint it. Now you can paint it before you assemble it, but you risk having the paint interfere with the glue drying. So maybe it's a better idea to mask it off after you paint it. Up to you. You can hand paint it with acrylic, you can use a rattle can. Uh, the acetone propellant in a rattle can is not going to melt it too much if you're using uh, the PLA filaments that are typically used. If you're using ABS, it will melt it a little bit, but it might just smooth it out a little bit for you. So that's something else to keep in mind so that you can find it again if you don't hit your target.